Hello and welcome to episode 90 of Missile Industries Ford Falcon 351 project. Now as I outlined in episode 87, I was going to do a power steering conversion on this XC Ford Falcon. And I was going to pick things up once all the parts arrived. Well, one of the parts arrived and at least that can give me a start on trying to hang the power steering pump in the engine bay. So this is my custom power steering pump bracket to suit the Sagnor, Sagnor power steering pump and the Cleveland motor. So with all this stuff rattling around in here, hopefully, hopefully I can hang that power steering pump in a position that will be conducive to belt pulleys lining up and belts actually fitting. So without further ado, let's unpack this and see how heinous it looks in a old school engine bay. Well then, I suspect there's going to be a little bit of trial and error in how this all gets mounted up because there's no instructions with this it's literally just a box of parts and it's time to start fumbling around and to see what works okay so this is where we're at so far I have figured out that those two bolts in the box mount this like so so there we go that adjusts along that plane wasn't well, immediately obvious to me how all this worked, but that black spacer down there does appear to go with that longer bolt, and the shorter bolt goes with the top spacer. Now I've spaced that out, because as far as I can tell, it's going to be cantilevered over if I don't. And let's hang it in the engine bay and see what we can see. That should theoretically sit in there like so. And then that should pivot in and out. So I have these two bolts. And they just don't want to go in. They go in literally half a turn. And then they stop. Now, chances are this water pump is probably full of paint. And these threads have never been chased out at any point in their lives because there's never been any need to. Actually, this is a motor from a power steering car. So you would think that it would have had these on the bracket or brackets hanging off this motor. But then again, I don't know what bracket would have used for that. But we'll experiment. I might see if I can chase those threads out with one of my taps and see what happens. All right, I've found a tap that appears to match my bolt from my custom kit. I'm just going to use it to chase the threads out of this bolt hole I'm not using on the water pump. I'm just going to see how that goes. See if I can make a thread that uh, Will support the use of these bolts that came with this kit. Let's see if this water pump thread accepts this bolt. Oh, that's, that feels pretty good. That's finger tight to there. Pretty happy with that. Well, it looks like this thread is cleaning up alright. I'll be able to get a bolt into these water pump bolt holes after all. Last one. Oh yeah. Time to bolt the pump in. Well here we are with a preliminary installation. Let's zoom in for a closer look. I think I started to chase these threads out a bit further. That one down there was getting pretty stubborn to tighten up. So I might go through that one again. But the top one is a okay and that feels 
pretty damn rigid. As you can see, bracket has a fair amount of adjustment in it. Away from here, right over to there. Now, my concern is it doesn't really leave a lot of room to get a hose on the back of that that uh, low pressure line. Might be okay with this one down here, but I won't know for sure until the parts turn up. Raw edge cogged soup belt. 1040. Yeah. Mm. Nope. This one. Mm. Probably slightly too slightly too small. I'd really prefer this to be as far over as I could get it. Cogged super belt. This 1120 belt the pitch looks pretty good. It's nestled nice and snugly into the uh, V of the pump pulley and it sits pretty good in the V for the water pump pulley as well. So what I think I'm going to do tomorrow is try to find myself a V belt. It's around a thousand millimeters to a thousand twenty millimeters. Let's see how it goes. Well I could have sworn these pulleys were slightly offset from each other but I've put the straight edge behind the power steering pump pulley and it pretty much lines up perfectly with the pulley on the water pump. So I'm going to take my measurement for the uh, belt and call that a win. So many belts to choose from. Uh, 1005 is too big. And the 980 is also too big. It's late in the evening and I have two more belts, a 940 and a 925 to start. Probably safe to say that the uh, 925 and 11 belt is too short. And the 940 in the 13A is virtually identical. So I think I should have gone with the 11A 965, which I thought would only be a small step down and not enough. Third trip to Super Cheap Autos. Now I have two more belts, a 965 11A and a 975 13A. And I'm going to see which of these fits in my engine bay and gives me the best amount of adjustment. Well, that 11A 965 is so close, I might actually have to do up that water pump pulley and see if I can get some tension on this. The power steering pump is fitted up and there's still a tiny amount of adjustment left in that before it reaches the end of its play so I'm going to go with this belt and uh, wrap this episode up. Summary time for episode 90 of Miss Industries Ford Falcon 351 project. So the bracket fits, need a little bit of adjusting well, I had to um, fix the threads in my water pump to get the bracket to bolt onto it. But after that, everything made sense. The power steering pump does indeed work with this bracket. And the pulley lines up. The biggest drama I've had is finding the right power steering pump belt for this application. Considering I'm using a six-cylinder power steering pump, it actually worked out all right. The magic number is 965 millimeters, 11A. It's the belt needed for this particular project. And with that, I'm wrapping this episode up. Maybe I should try this 13A 975 just in case. No, I don't think so.